Hi everybody, it's Sheila with Baby Moon Boutique Embroidery Designs and I wanted to show you real quick how to use lettering on uh, embroidery fonts to make a personalized uh, snap tab. So what I have is So What Pro opened here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to open an embroidery font. So I like to download fonts from several places on the internet. One of my favorite places is designsbyjuju.com and I'll show you, um, let's see, some of my fonts here. There, I keep them all in a folder called embroidery fonts. Um, designed by Jujus are all, they all start with uh, DBJJ. So let's go get the sans serif font, <clears throat> which is a very simple embroidery font. I'm gonna get the PES version, and I'm gonna pick the three quarter inch size. Usually when I'm making a personalized snap tab, I pick the three quarter inch size um, of lettering because it's a it's a good size um, it makes uh, it makes a nice sized uh, key fob or backpack tag and the three quarter inch size is just what I found that works best you may like something different and so that's okay you can pick a smaller one or you can pick a larger one but the three quarter inch size is what works for me so let's just do um, a word real quick we're gonna do the word friends and um, so let's pick, um, in So What Pro, uh, you have these lettering, this icon for lettering over here that brings up all the icons. I opened up the F in Friends, and uh, you can see I've opened some other fonts in here this morning. So I'm going to finish writing the word Friends. So I'm going to pick R, then I, then E, then N, D, and S. Now we all know how to spell friends. So you can see that it um, in So What Pro when I click using the icons tab that that um, brings them all just really nicely onto the screen into my hoop as in a straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and make the hoop bigger. Okay and we've got our word friends here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join all these threads. So I'm going to join everything that's that color I'm going to get rid of this lettering pane on the side so I can see that I have one object that is the emerald color that is the world friends. So I'm going to click on it and bring it up because I want to show you a little bit more what I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this border tool that says add a border to the workspace. So I've, I'm going to select the color, the threads that are green, um, and then I'm going to click add a border and it brings up this menu. Now you can do different things with this and I'm just going to show you what I do. Um, I select the color, I click the border button, and then I have, I like to use an auto border. Now my auto border settings are set uh, three millimeters from the pattern that it's going to, that gives a three millimeter um, border between, or boundary between the lettering and the stitching that I'm applying. Um, I use a bean stitch outline, which is also called a triple stitch. Um, I have my stitch length which is um, how long the stitches are at uh, 28. Um, that, that's functionally 2.8 millimeters. Um, and those are the only settings that you need to do when you're doing an auto border. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Auto border, distance from the pattern 3, stitch length 28, bean outline stitched. So then we'll say OK. Now, so what pro? added this nice border for me. If you if you want to adjust this border in any way, you can always go in and edit your stitches. So let's edit some stitches out because I don't care for the way that stitch is sticking out between the F and the R. So let's just go get it and take it out. Okay, so let's split our pattern. Let's split at the stitch. Let's zoom in real good so that we can see all those stitches. And let's turn off our 3D texture. Okay, now we can see our stitch points. So I'm going to need to take out that stitch. I'm just going to select it and delete it. And when I'm in the um, Edit Stitches menu, I'm going to delete that stitch. Oh, this is better. Look here. Now I have, um, it, when I delete these stitches, what the program does is it just joins them all together. So there's one more stitch that I want to get rid of. And let's get rid of, let's just pull this one down a little bit to pull them down and readjust them. I'm just going to grab that stitch, hit control and shift, and so I'm moving it down here. 
so I want it to be flat with everything else. Now let's click over here because there's one more stitch right there. That's number eight. Now look, this is about where it starts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap those just a bit. I'm going to pull those down over there and I'm going to close that. That is good. You know what? I'm not going to close it because let's go and get this one right here. There was one still sticking out. Let's pull it down a little bit until it's nice and flat. And those are going to be fine. Okay, now let's close that. Okay, so let's turn our texture back on because I don't like looking at those stitches. I now, and I can see there's one more that I need to edit. So let's edit the stitches again, split it stitch. Now let's zoom in just a little bit closer and see what is sticking up right here. Let's pick that stitch right there, that's number eight. I'm going to control and shift, and then I'm going to grab it and pull it down until it's flat. And let's see why there's another one back there. Stitch number two is not flat. Stitch number six is not flat. We want him to be flat. Let's flatten him out. Okay. Anything else? I think we're, uh, we've got it zoomed in so close that it functionally won't be visible on our stitch out. So let's close that back out. Let's zoom back out so we can see what's going on here. So now we have two objects. We have two objects. We have uh, the stitching for the word friends. We also have the border that's in black. Now when I sew this out, I'm going to sew it all out in one color. I'm going to sew the lettering and the border out in the same color. But I want my machine to stop in between these two colors because I want to add a backing so that I don't have stitching showing on the back. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to add a tab. So what I actually did is I created um, some tabs in another program that I use and I digitized them out and I and so I'm going to go grab one of those tabs and I'm going to add it into this file. So we're going to merge a file. I'm going to merge the tabs that I use. Um, and if you want to get these tabs yourself or if you have another tab that you found somewhere else, you're, it, it's totally okay to use that. Um, I have mine listed over here on uh, Baby Moon Boutique Embroidery Designs. And it's the... Uh, the listing is called Snap Tab DIY, make your own Snap Tab design. Um, it comes with three styles to turn any felty into a Snap Tab. You can also use it on your personalized lettering tags. In this file, I've got uh, three styles of Snap Tab. I have a pointed one, a rounded one, and a squared off one. You may have a preference for what you like to cut out. Some people like to cut rounded ones. Some people like to cut pointed ones and some people like to cut square ones. They're all about a half of an inch wide, um, which means that you can use the three quarter inch hardware to, um, to apply after you've gotten your design sewn and cut out. So let's go back to Sew What Pro here and I'm going to go get my file where I have that one. So I've got that over in my file called Tags. It's in one of my, let's see, that's the BBED tabs. Okay, now here I'm going to pick the pointed tab. And I'm picking the pointed tab just because I like to cut out the points. I think they look really nice and clean. So let's go, let's zoom back in so we can see our whole hoop. Now you can see that this probably is not going to fit with this on the side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tab and I'm going to rotate it so it's going the other way. So I want it to be facing down. I'm going to place it in my um, hoop, and I'm going to grab these two colors by hitting Control, then selecting those colors. I'm going to click this button and rotate that once 90 degrees, and I'm going to pop it right on top of that tab. So let's move it, and let's see what we've got here. Now I'm going to click off of it so I can see. Now I can see that the tab is butted up nicely against the border. So what I like to do next is I like to take both the tab and the border, select those two, and make them the same color. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click Edit and Join Threads so that those two threads will sew in one step. So we have two steps that we're going to do. First, we're going to do the lettering on your hoop. What I like to do is I like to float upholstery pleather or vinyl in a hoop um, on tearaway stabilizer. So then I'll run my stitch with it floated, and then I'll take my hoop off my machine without unhooping the design, and I will actually float um, on the back side another piece of upholstery pleather, and then stitch out the outline um, and, and the tab all together. So that's how you make a 
personalized lettering design. Now you can use, instead of the word friends, you could use somebody's name. Um, I make hundreds of these with uh, as handmade goods for local people and um, on my other Etsy shop, I've, I've actually made hundreds of these designs. So this is the way that works for me. There is other software that you can use that you might like to use um, to make your tabs, but this is one way to do it. So I hope that's helpful and I hope that you have fun making some amazing personalized snap tabs. Thanks for watching.